Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the Word of God is true, and everything is promised. I know He will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Sing it again. Jesus is. Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again y'all Jesus is the way One more time Jesus is the way Amen of your mind traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find reflections of your old past they seem to face you every day this one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way y'all know this song sing it with me Jesus is the answer for the world today Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Amen Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way I know you got mountains That you think you cannot climb you say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine Well in case you don't know I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true And everything is promised I know he will do it for you Stand up and sing it with me now Jesus is the answer for the world today Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other it's Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer, sing it again Jesus is For the world Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today, above him there's no one, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the way, sing it again y'all, Jesus is the way, one more time, Jesus is the way, amen. Jesus is the answer for the world today. 
today Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way I know you got questions In the corners of your mind Traces of discouragement and Peace you cannot find Reflections of your old past They seem to face you every day this one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way. Y'all know this song? Sing it with me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. This Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way I know you got mountains That you think you cannot climb You say your skies are dark And you think the sun won't shine Well in case you don't know I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know He will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him. Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again y'all Jesus is the way One more time Jesus is the way Amen of your mind traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find reflections of your old past they seem to face you every day this one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way y'all know this song, sing it with me Jesus is the answer for the world today Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Amen Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way I know you got mountains That you think you cannot climb you say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, 
Lord. I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know he will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Sing it again. Jesus is Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the um, Good morning, good evening, good afternoon From wherever you're joining us from uh, Welcome to our service today This is World Changers International Christian uh, Center We have been uh, studying um, uh, Qualitative growth in life So I will welcome our Father in the Lord Apostle uh, Eric Israel Okere uh, to welcome us to this service with a word of prayer. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for bringing us to the second day of this holy convocation. We ask, O oh God, that you speak to us. Let your glory shine upon us. We ask, O oh God, that everyone hearing your word will hear from your spirit. And each and every one of us will make up our mind to become men growing in quality. In the name of Jesus Christ. To the extent that you can depend upon us for many good things in life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, as we start our service today, um, maybe, uh, sir, we can welcome a few people who have already joined us online. Um, then we can just go to a recap of our study from yesterday on qualitative growth in life. Okay, we want to welcome Sister Sylvia from Ethiopia. Thank you for joining us. Stanford Mutuku, the Lord bless you. Thank you for joining us. Pastor Helen Oseno, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Life Eternal Development Church, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir, for the introduction. Um, for those who are joining us today, we started our study yesterday, and uh, I would like just to go back to a few things that were really standing out in terms of qualitative growth in life. Um, we looked at definition of qualitative growth. I'd like to pick a few points from that, sir, that can help our viewers today just to be able to understand really what we captured in that area. So the first thing we were looking at was the definition of the qualitative growth. Um, the growth that sustains one when they're going get stuff. Uh, that is how we can be able to define qualitative growth in life. The other one was the internal debt to strengthen one against adversities. You are where you are because of a prayer you prayed or a prayer you did not pray at all. Uh, and then we looked at it also as growth in strength, stamina, and vigor. Uh, we also looked at it in terms of growth that brings out your inner beauty, makes you stronger than your enemy, brings our durability of, brings durability of your Christianity. Um, we also look at some litmus tests for qualitative growth. Some of the litmus tests, what are the uh, litmus tests that comes with qualitative growth in life? So we looked at one of them was adversity. If they can pass if you, they can pass through adversity and still stand. Um, then we see persecution as another litmus test. We also see trials. When trials come and you're still happy and, and your quality is strong. So it also shows that you, are, have, uh, you, you have a strong quality when you're able to pass through trials. Then we were able to look at temptation. Uh, when sin is presented to you in a palatable way. 
battles, uh, wars and battles, spiritual, emotional and financial, and pressures of life. Um, and also, um, w I, would, I would like to leave it at that point so that we can know, sir, what you have in store for us today. Thank you. All right, today we will be considering how to acquire qualitative growth. How to acquire it. Um, it's good to know about qualitative growth, but we need to know how to have it. So that's, so that's where I'm concentrating today. All right, so let's go ahead into the, let me show you some scriptural aspect of what I'm teaching today. Proverbs chapter number 4, verse 7. Proverbs chapter number 4, verse 7. The Bible says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Then he went for and said, with all that you will ever get on earth, get understanding. <laughs> because understanding makes you a quality person on earth. Anybody who has understanding cannot be bought with money. Understanding makes you very advanced. Understanding makes you to be ahead of your enemies. Ahead. In fact, I always define, define understanding as being under a thing and still standing. You unravel the secrets behind something and you are still standing. You enter deep into something, under it, locate all the hidden things inside it, and you are still standing and the thing has not knocked you down. It is a sign that you have, you know, qualitative growth. You have grown. Many times when you see the secret of something, you collapse. Many times when you get under something, it's the weight of the thing will overwhelm you. But when you are under something and you are still standing, it means your quality is strong. In Luke chapter 22, verse 36, the Bible says, Then said he unto them, But now he that had a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scripts. The Bible says, And he that had no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. It means a sword is more important than garment. So, in quality, your sword is more valuable than your garment. So, from there, you discover that God began to tell us to prioritize on qualitative stuff. So that we are not just running after things that doesn't have quality. Things that would occupy space, but they are not adding value. He said, if you do not have a sword sell your garment. Your garment is not as important as a sword, so you need a, a, a sword. Many years ago, when I saw that scripture, I decided to settle with my Bible, read my Bible over and over and over again, settle down to understand it, listen to men of God, because in the spirit realm, your, the word of God is a sword. So that sword is better than dressing. I remember in those days, I don't really have dresses, so I don't really care about it. So, I prefer loading myself with grace than just wearing powerful dress and being very empty. <laughs> and being very empty. So, the Bible says, Jesus said, in quality, your sword is more valuable than your dress. So, sell it and get the sword. So, that makes you understand that qualitative growth could be expensive. You need to make some effort to get quality into your life. For example, education, if you have to study to the highest peak of becoming a professor or becoming a doctorate degree holder, you need to pay some price, strive until you get there. When you finally get there, it gives some prestige. I discovered it just gives some prestige, that's all. <laughs> yeah, and then when you tell somebody, ah, you know, I'm doing PhD, the guy respects you so much that this guy has gone to school seriously. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what it does. It makes that person understand that you are submissive enough under the lecturers, past through the rigors. In fact, there are some wicked lecturers, I, I repeat, very wicked lecturers, 
who will trouble you and trouble you. As you finally graduate, you thank God that you have come out of them. So come out from them. When others remember such kind of persons and they see you graduate, they respect you. They may not respect you for just having a PhD. They respect you for passing through those kind of lecturers who serve as obstacles. So that, the, that shows that you have passed through tough times. You passed through trials. You passed through temptations. And finally, you came out strong. So qualitative growth is when you pass through all this and you are still out, shining, then your value becomes ascertained. For example, when gold is dropped into fire, after passing through fire, it shines brighter than it was before it entered fire. And then the quality rises. Then the value rises. Because it is shining, people pay more for it. Because fire refines. And when you pass through refining, you now become more qualitative. Your value shoots up because you have passed through fire. But when you pass through fire and that is the end of you, your value is small. <laughs> That's why yesterday when I was teaching on the litmus test, you must pass through adversity. You must pass through serious adversity to prove the quality that you are made up of. Again, Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 to 48. Matthew chapter 13, 44 to 48. The Bible says again, the kingdom of heaven is likened, like unto, unto treasure hid in the field, which when a man had found, he hid it, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he had, and buyeth that field. Imagine, a man sees the field, says, what? This treasure is here. And he goes to sell everything he had, because of the quality of what he saw there, because of the value. He sells everything he had ever acquired on earth to get that stuff. Because that stuff is powerful, quality. That stuff adds value. Glory to Jesus. He said again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, qualitative great growth is of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it it, it requires great price for you to have qualitative growth. Amen. Sell everything you have for it. When you are a strong Christian and you are dependable and you are reliable and people can rely on you, you have great price. That's why, you see, in Nigeria, we don't joke with somebody like Pastor Debo. He has been a Christian for a while and consistent. No stories, no scandals, no gra gra. He has remained. So we don't joke with that kind of person. He's of great price. If you trouble him, all of us will get up and trouble you. Sir. Why? Because the man is a quality man. Sir. For more than 40 years, he's been serving God with no stories. That's why someone like Reverend Joe is of great price. You do grag around with the, the people that do grag around you will be too much. Why? Because over the years, he stood the test of time with all the temptations of things going on in the world. See? When somebody have, have grown qualitatively, he becomes very expensive. His value shoots up and becomes very high. Again, the Bible says in verse 47, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, all kinds of things. The Bible says in verse 48, which when it was full, they drew it to shore. Verse number 48, that is where I am multimedia. Which when it was full, they drew it to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. Quality is always selected, hand picked. It's not part of the crowd. Uh -uh. Everything together, say, okay, fine. You pick out quality and put in a vessel. Useless one, just drop it somewhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Amen. It, I think, sir, that is very, very a very very important point you're talking about yes. and when you're talking about the man who looked at the land and, and sold everything to acquire it. everything and you've also talked about wisdom and understanding most of us most people would like to have wisdom without understanding <laughs> and you will see that there's this man who was following jesus and was asking jesus that he wants to uh to follow him jesus told him go and sell everything Ever. and follow me so that was a sign that Jesus was saying this, all these things for you, starts to see your quality. Mm. Then you have to be able to 
show some level of commitment in yes. the things of God. Yes. So I think that's a very, very important point. And I wanted to just pick those points. Strong Christians are very committed. When you see somebody who says he's coming and he's not coming and he's not, he's not a quality Christian, it's not a good character for you to say yes and later say no and later adjust it to yes, she's no ish. You are not a good Christian. You are a very bad Christian. When a Christian is not dependable, he's not a quality Christian. When a Christian cannot say something and you meet it that way, mm -hmm. even if he's been in church for more than 20 years, he's a very useless Christian. Mm -hmm. You cannot depend on him. Such Christians cannot be trusted by God. And they cannot also be trusted by man. See, many people like being invited to speak. Like being invited so that they can show that they have grown over the years. But when people invite you and they see that you are empty, and they see the quality in you is very low, they will never invite you anymore. Sometime ago, some people gathered and called me and said, how come people keep inviting you? Today you are in London, another day you are in Scotland, the other day you are in India, another time you are in the U.S. How come there you are in Germany? How come? I said, well, number one, the character I exhibit when I get there. And number two, what I download when I get there. I prepare myself so that when I get there, I'm a blessing to them, not a problem to them. Sometimes you could get some people like they are guests in your house and you regret you ever met them. Because they will place demand, they will trouble you, they will become a burden to you, and then they will not be a blessing at all. For you to be a blessing, you need to be loaded. The Bible says that man sold everything to get that important stuff. Understanding cannot be overemphasized. When you have understanding, you're a very useful person. A person that lacks understanding is very useless. A person who lacks understanding. Oh my God, it's just occupying space. Understand. <laughs> Understand. <laughs> Understanding makes you a quality human being. Oh, glory to Jesus. Yeah. Ability to process things in your mind, know what to do, and not also jump out and destroy everything. Uh -uh. Ability to do it at the right time. People on earth like those who understand them. Yes. For example, Nearly everybody in this church, I know them. When they do things wrong, I will fire you and I still understand you. Oh, I, I, that I won't tell you that you know that won't happen because that makes me not to be a pastor. That makes me to be a liar, a deceiver. I will tell you the truth. But I will also understand with you and pull you out of it by force and stand till you come out. You know, I am not a pastor that covers things and pretends. I'm not a pretender. But understanding I have, I will follow you to fight the battle. In fact, there's a lot of praise in church. If you mess up, tell me first. Don't let me hear it from outside. If you tell me first, if finally the people outside now comes to report to me, I will tell them, thank you. She has already told me, he has already told me. I have flogged him. Now let us repair what went wrong. Why? Because my son or my daughter have told me. But when you have not told me and they are telling me from outside, I will flog you in their presence because you have not behaved responsibly. Why? The reason is, when you tell me, I will process it with my understanding and sh be able to shield you where you went wrong and correct you. So that when they finally come, I'm able to face them. There was a time when one of our members had a problem. And more than 27 people gathered in church to accuse him. And they said they want to deal with him. The good thing was that the guy had already told me what he did wrong. I've already flogged him. In fact, the flogging I gave him was much more than I would have given you, given them in, in giving him in the presence of those guys. So I told them, yes. He had told me what he did wrong. Now I believe that you came here for us to solve the problem. They said, no, sir, prophesy. This guy is a thief. Prophesy. This guy is a liar. See, there's no need for the prophecy. He had already told me what he had done. Do I need to prophesy again? Imagine this guy told me, sir, I have messed up. I did this, I did that. Then I prophesy. Is that prophecy? <laughs> that one is what from knowledge. He had already told me. So there's no need for us to prophesy. So let's do this. Let's help him to come out of it. Everybody was all amazed. One guy told me, said he will use charms on him. I said, try it. Try it. You understand there are levels. You shoot the charm, I will send it back to you sevenfold. And nothing will happen to the guy. I said, let him solve the problem. Why? Because of understanding. I understood what he had done. So that's why I'm sitting as a father. Now let us solve it. Now you, don't do that again. Do this and do that to solve the problem. You will not cast charms on him. For what? I will send it back to send that sevenfold. Sir. And it will hit you very hard. Why? Because of understanding. But if that guy was dodging and playing games and later and I had 
I will flog him in presence of all those guys because if I don't, I will be a wicked man who protects and covers, you know, uh, my children that have done something wrong. Wrong. So, but I've handled him at home. I don't need to handle him outside. Outside, I will defend him and say, "Yes, he told me he, he, he behaved foolishly. Don't be angry." Now, let us solve the problem. Hallelujah! Praise God. So the Bible says the kingdom of God is like a man who went to the sea and gathered every kind of thing. The net was full, but they were not quality stuff. Then there's a need for selection and separation. See, qualitative growth makes you selected. And they just love you and they want you to be part of the panel regularly. They want you to be around. Why? Because you grow. But when you refuse to grow in quality, nobody wants you around. Because you are like one of those things that they pick from the sea. Maybe to snail shell that is rotten. Snake that have died. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of things in the sea eh? a, a, a fish that is getting rotten they drop all those ones they only pick fresh important things that are still alive hallelujah praise god just on that point sir yes. the bible also tells us that many are called but few are chosen few are chosen yeah. the reason for the few is quality quality makes you part of the few in fact, some people will complain, why didn't they ask me to do this? Because you have not exhibited quality in your character. You have not been consistent. You have not been dependable. You have not been... See, when you grow up and become a quality Christian, you'll be very reliable. Very... See, everybody in church knows when I say I'm coming, I'm there. If I say I'm not coming, forget it. I am not there. Close the chapter. That's me. They know our pastor does not play games. He doesn't tell lies. He doesn't play games. That one, go and sleep. You know, one of our members said one day he was in a gathering where people were gossiping about their pastors. And then they began to say their uh, pastors are thieves. Pastors are liars. Pastors. He told them, stop there. My pastor is not a thief. My own pastor. He will use his money to run the church and bless all of us and send us to school. Your pastor may be an arm robber, not mine. And it became a quarrel. He said, Forget it. Sir. My own pastor is different. Why? Because of quality character. Your qual the quality of a Christian shows in his character. When you stand like steel, when they know on this matter, this guy will not bend. Sir. This guy is not a liar. This guy cannot cheat. This guy cannot change and play games. You know, this guy does not have ulterior motives. Praise God. When people see that you, you become dependable, they can rely on you because you will not break easily. They, 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 they know that they can go and sleep when you're around. Praise God. They can commit important things into your hand and tell you what is in their heart. They don't need to code it. Codification of information. You don't need to be using prophetic anointing to know what they're talking about. There's no need for that. They tell you straight the way it is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. One more scripture before we go into the other segment. Now, in case anybody has questions, please go ahead and ask. She will pick the questions. I will answer them any question qualitative growth we want quality christians raised in our time see quality christians are scarce in this generation very scarce you see some christians they tell you you are crazy you, you a christian hi you are cre what <laughs> you wonder should they call it christian or just stop there <laughs> because the guy you can't even call the christ complete before tian <laughs> hallelujah Luke chapter number 15, verse 4 to 5, and verse 8 to 10. Luke chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every quality Christian must pay price. You pay the price to stand as a Christian. The Bible says, Yea, all that will live only in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution. Persecution should not be able to bend you, you should be able to stand. Luke chapter 15, verse 4 to 5, the Bible says, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he cometh to him, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Ma, this person had hundred sheep, one got lost. He left 90 and 9 in the forest and forgot them and went after one. One, why? Quality. He went after that only one. 
What happened to the 99? He left them in the forest. He didn't even care about them. He ran after one. Just one. One goat. Because that goat is not an ordinary goat. It's that goat. When you say that goat, you can buy one million of the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I read my Bible one day and I discovered something about David. The Bible says to us, David went to war. And one of the sons of Goliath almost killed him. The guy is called, is it Sibekai or something like that. The Bible says he almost killed uh, David. He ran after David and wanted to use javelin to finish David. The Bible says one of David's men just succored David and plucked the guy and wounded the giant. He said the giant has six fingers on each hand. And David was succored. The Bible says when they brought David back home, they swore that day that David would never go to war again. That ah, if this guy died, the light of Israel is put off. They told David, you are more than 1,000 Israelites. That is what they call quality, sir. It's better for 1,000 Israelites to die than you. You die for what? In fact, God, don't go to war again. We'll be going to war. They kept him at home. Why? Quality. Because of the kind of person he is. He was not an empty barrel making noise somewhere. They knew that if David dies, Israel has closed. He was the one who put Israel's map in the world. He was the one who conquered from river Nile to river Euphrates and put the flag of Israel all the way. And everybody began to submit to him. Oh, glory to Jesus. So his quality had risen. It was not just quantity. One man, Ryan Squad, man. So everybody respected him and said, you are not going to war again. So we do not put off the light of Israel. Hallelujah. The Bible says he went after one sheep. One. Left 99. Chai. May God make us important in life. Amen. Verse number 8 says, Either that woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I lost. That peace was an important peace. Without that peace, the thing is not complete. Quality is what makes you complete. What has the greatest value to you that makes you uncommon, that makes people say, What? We want this guy. That is quality. You know, many years ago when I was pursuing the anointing, I pursued the anointing because I knew the anointing would add value to me. The anointing brings quality to your life. I told you guys, I don't know whether you remember the story of when I went to preach in a place. I, 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 after preaching, God told me that there are witches there. I told the witches to come out. The witches came out and they were looking at me. <laughs> I commanded fire on them. They were just looking at me. They, nothing happened to them. They were even hissing. They won't put their hands on their shoulders and doing like this for me. Later, I told them to go back to their seat. They went back to their seat. People were running away from the crusade ground. In fact, for a long time, they didn't invite me to that place again to do crusade because there was nothing to show that I was called of God. But when the anointing came, oh my God, which is confessed and Christ by the grace of God, the anointing adds value. It makes you a quality person. It makes you sought after. It adds quality to your life. Your Christian lives have add more value. Makes you responsible and reliable. You know, one pastor was asking me, how come when you are coming to preach in any nation, you don't ask us to pay your ticket? I said, God called all of us together. So why should I punish you because we are doing the work of God? I should not punish you because I'm coming to you. For what? There's no need for that. If you are led to sow seed, sow it freely. The God loveth a cheerful giver, not the one that they put rope on his neck. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So quality in character, quality in grace. Pastor, they will wave hand and the lame is walking. And somebody else will lay hands, lay hands and the hair will disappear from the guy's head. And the man... Be <laughs> quality. Quality of grace that the man carries. Hallelujah. He stands by the altar and says, Thank you, Daddy. My daddy told me that there's a short man that wants to grow tall. Check your trousers, you are now tall. And suddenly the short man metamorphoses and grows tall. And the trousers shoots up. I, I saw the man that was in the camp that day. And the man came up with his wife. And his wife was looking at him like this. So Pastor was asking the woman, Why are you looking at him like this? They say, I was taller than him before we came to church. <laughs> Inside the service, the man metamorphosed and became taller than his wife. And the wife was checking him like he said, ah, what happened to this guy? They've been married for some years, more than 15 years. 
And the woman has always known the man as a short man. And suddenly, one service, just by word of knowledge, the man metamorphosed, became taller than normal. And the woman is now checking the man. That's the anointing. That's quality grace. Uh, but somebody else will lay hands on that man, short man, the man will become shorter. <laughs> The man will become very short. He said to be painting him by the time he's leaving. <laughs> Puffing with oil and nothing will happen. All the hair on his head will scrape off because of the hand. In fact, the shape of the hand will be on his head. <laughs> quality grace, man. Quality. Everything on earth has quality. Quality, quality brings durability. When you are a quality Christian, you last. You can't fail easily. When you are a quality Christian, Oh my God, whoever attacks you will suffer harm. The Bible says, I've made you a cornerstone. Whoever fall upon you will be broken in pieces. And whoever you fall upon, you grind to powder. Anyway, you are the one that will lose because you are dealing with quality here. Quality lasts. Oh, glory to Jesus. Yeah, just on that point, sir, when you're talking about quality, one uh, Bible passage has come, on, uh, come to my mind Go ahead. about Daniel. Mm -hmm. The way Daniel was quality until God had to make the lions fast without eating because daniel was in the den of lions. you see yeah i'm telling you because of the, his value god, because god sent an angel and tied all the mouth of the lions and the lions became pillow for him to sleep overnight <laughs> they, they, they turned to pillow uh, you, you arrange yourself they all arrange like mattress and pillow and he slept on them <laughs> in the morning he got out that's quality the bible says when in the morning, the king commanded that you arrest all those who wanted him inside. The, they arrested all of them. The Bible said before they dropped into the den, the lions picked them mid-air. Because they were quantity, not quality. <laughs> it, it, the Bible said smashed their bone mid-air. My God. When you are quality, even God guards your life. Okay, for example, let us see. Have you seen the president moving? There's convoy of policemen and soldiers. In fact, policemen will line up the road. When the president is coming from the airport in Kenya here, Mombasa Road will be lined up by policemen every two, two meters. There will be two policemen, two policemen, two policemen, two. You know the president is about to pass because of the quality of who he is. Many other people pass that road. Nobody knows you pass this. <laughs> Same road. If you like, wear a suit. In fact, wear the suit on your head. <laughs> you don't be passing. Nobody cares that you pass. But the president is passing. Two policemen, two meters. Two policemen, two meters. On both sides of the road. In fact, you look like a criminal, they will arrest you. In fact, your eye, if your eye don't look somehow, they will pick you up. Or maybe you are over scratching your head. They will think something is wrong with you. <laughs> Why? Because the president, wants, a quality person wants to pass. Praise God. Hallelujah. Quality is highly valued and respected globally. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Let's get into how to acquire qualitative growth how do i acquire qualitative growth number one for you to acquire qualitative growth you need to consume quality food consumption of quality food for a child to grow and be a strong child that child needs to eat very well that's one of my sons my biological sons he doesn't like eating so he doesn't have stamina. His younger brother can carry heavier things than him. So I keep telling him, eat to gali, eat to <laughs> eat gari, eat to gali, so you can be strong. Because by the time you are taking indomie, 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 you only you, 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 you only carry flour when others are carrying heavy bags. So what you consume determines your stamina, determines your quality. Now, what you consume physically determines how strong or how qualitative the stamina you have is. So also in the spirit realm, the kind of word you consume. So people always want to consume a prophetic word. Prophetic word is when a pastor has gone to cook himself and comes with, quality, with that grace to come and bless you. It's like chewing meat and not giving you. That's what it is. That's how it is. But when you listen to the word and you pray on your own and deal with matters, that is a sign that you have grown. At the beginning, your parents can give you food, feed you, but after a while, you should feed yourself. 
When you are always looking for who to feed you, you have not grown. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are a queer, queer, queer Christian. A very local Christian that, that have not understood what you are doing. At some point, you should be able to take your bath by yourself. That's a sign that you have grown. At the beginning, your parents can take bath, bath you. In fact, they can bait you publicly anywhere. But, bait you. but after a while, you should not be baited publicly. <laughs> When you are a baby, even when strangers are around, they bath you. They <laughs> remove your pampas and organize you. But by the time you grow up, if they are still bathing you publicly, it means something has happened to you. You are the one that should know where the bathroom is. It's a sign that your quality has come into you. When you become qualitative, you are able to do some things by yourself. You are able to handle some things boldly. Not every time, mommy, eh, I will report it to my daddy. There are some people like that, after they get married, everything that I will tell my daddy for you, I'll tell my daddy. Mommy, I start telling again. Shut up! Face the marriage there, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> what you consume, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. The Bible says in Hebrews 5, 12 to 14, for when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Oh, glory to God. They have exercised themselves. They are full age. They are mature. They are quality because they've eaten strong meat. What you eat determines your quality. The kind of word you hear. Stop loving to hear the word of uh, the, the uh, 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 shallow word. Settle down to hear hard words, serious one. I was preaching on Sunday on how to be focused during adversity. How to be focused in adversity. Because that you are a Christian does not remove you from adversity. Are you not a human being? That you are a Christian does not exempt you from some adversity that will come. So you should be prepared for it and be very strong. To the extent that when adversity sees you, adversity bows and is broken in pieces. Everybody will pass through adversity, but the advantage of being a Christian is that you will pass through it with joy and you come out at the other side unhurt, while others are damaged by the adversity. But you come out smoother, finer than you entered in. Why? Because you're a child of God. That's what Christianity does for you. Glory to Jesus. So eat quality food. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 3 says, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, because you are a baby. It says, For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now were, are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy, strife, division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? When you are very carnal, always calculating. Hey, how many people are in church? No, no, no. Come to church when church is food. Ah, over carnal is worrying you. Carnal people do not have that understanding. They, they are milk suckers. They always come when the pastor is around. You no, know, one day I asked somebody to preach when I traveled to go and preach in another country. By the time I came back, I noticed some people never came to church. So I called them and said, why, why are you not in church? Ah, and when I checked and I didn't see you, I just went there and said, why? Am I God? So I said, you are a baby. You have not grown. Your journey in Christianity is very far. I mean, you came to church, looked, and you didn't see Apostle Eric on the altar, and you walked out. And you wonder, what will this one preach? Very soon to be your turn to when you stand there and say, what will this one preach? I started somehow one way now, before I'm able to get to this level. And there are still many heavier preachers than me. Yes, on earth. Praise God. There are. People who have gone ahead of me. People when they open their mouth, even me, I'll be taking notes. There are people like that on earth. As I speak, people take notes. Yes. But the truth is this. When you are a baby, you are still sucking milk. Your journey to quality is far. 
God cannot depend on you. Have you noticed that when your son is behaving like a boy, you cannot give him important things? You cannot show him your bank account. You just take him to the bank, give him some change. Or put some little change in his account. But when your son becomes very responsible, have quality mentality, you can give him the account and make him a signatory. Hand over the company to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. In John chapter 16, verse 12 to 14, the Bible says, John 16, 12 to 14 says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come, and he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you are, your quality is still very low. I can't tell you now, because if I tell you, to destroy you. He said, okay, but I, when you grow up and the Holy Ghost comes to help you, he will not begin to guide you. In, he will be guiding you. He may not tell you because if he tells you, you may faint. So he will guide you into the truth. That's what you do to a child. You guide that child to where he's, you, you, you want him to go because he will tell him you are going to, you are taking him to Mombasa. Say, hey, Mombasa. No, 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 it's too far. I'm not going. So what you do is say, let's enter into the car. Let's go to the airport. You just take him. When he lands Mombasa, he will shut up. You guide you guide him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So he will guide you. He will not speak of himself, but he will speak whatever he, uh, he shall hear from heaven. He will show you things to come. When you show children things to come, they get scared. But when you show adults things to come, they get happy. Children don't have capacity to bear things to come. Say, hey, is that what is going to happen? No, 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 I'm not. They're afraid. But when you show an adult who is mature, somebody who has quality, qualitative growth, say, let's go. Fantastic. Good future, man. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number two. The second um, way to acquire qualitative growth is insist on qualitative inputs. Insist on qualitative inputs. qualitative inputs in computer language said garbage in garbage out whatever you sow is what you reap if you want quality out of your life load yourself with quality select people to hear don't just hear anybody don't just hear any noise maker <laughs> There are many people who are making noise everywhere. Hear word that would change you from who you used to be to who you ought to be. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 to 9. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Emphasis. Be not deceived. God is not more. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatsoever a man soweth, the same thing shall he also reap. So what do you put into your life? The inputs determine the output. Who do you listen to? I select people I listen to. When you go on YouTube, there are many preachers. There are those I listen to that bring qualitative growth into my life. I listen to people like Tudo Bismarck. That one settles down to, to, to drink the word of God. John C. Maxwell, Miles Monroe, Reverend Joe Olaya, Pastor E. A. Adeboe. People who are cooked over a period of many years. You know, such men will affect you positively. But when you listen to no, those who are making noise, you also be a noise maker. You know, you're, you're gonna say, you, you, you got to make it, man. You got to, somebody say, make it, make it. Say, Tell us what is in the Bible. What is make it, make it. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to make it. Somebody say, I got to make it. I'm making it. I'm making it. I'm making it. Say, make it. Say, make it. Say, make it. Oh, God, make what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and then you see people dancing, jumping, jumping. When you check them, when it's 
Temptation come, they have collapsed. When adversity come, they are angry. Make it, make it, make what? It is time for us to settle down and eat quality stuff. Insist on qualitative inputs. Proverbs 22, verse number 8. Proverbs 22, 8 says, He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. When you sow iniquity, you reap vanity, you reap em emptiness. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So also, if you sow qualitatively, you reap quality. Hallelujah. Psalm 126 verse 6 says something very serious that we need to note. It says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Precious seed. Precious seed. Precious seed. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. There are useless seeds and there are precious seeds. When you plant precious seed, Surely your harvest will be quality harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number three. Uh, just one minute, sir. I'd, I'd, yes. just, I'd like to remind uh, our viewers that you can type your questions um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the chat box so that we are able to see some of the questions you might have. Uh, as we continue, we'll look at it maybe at the end and be able to answer these questions as they come. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, Henry Katongole is watching us from Benin City, Nigeria. Pastor Helen Oseno is watching with two friends. God bless you, ma. Thank you. Apostle James Oluwojoba, my God, great man of God. God bless you. Thank you for joining us all the way from Nigeria. We appreciate you, sir. Matthew the Nazareth is watching us. The Lord bless Matthew the Nazareth. Cyrus Mutia, aka Preyo, is watching us. The Lord bless Cyrus Mutia. Simon Miner is watching us. The Lord bless Simon Miner. Robin Dizun is also watching us. God bless Robin Dizun. Faith Amike is watching us. The Lord bless Faith Amike all the way from, that's from uh, Kuwait. The Lord bless you. David Dave is also watching. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Jacqueline Lokosang is also watching from Ethiopia. Richard Wale Komolafe from South Africa is watching. The Lord bless Richard Wale Komolafe. Godfrey Dakpesa is watching from Benin City, Nigeria. God bless you. Reba Nakuti Kuloba is also watching us. The Lord bless you. Joy Obaseki is also watching. The Lord bless Joy Obaseki. I, I was wondering where Mary Otieno is. Mary Otieno is also watching. The quality adds value to you. God bless Mary Otieno. Right, Beatrice Ungus is also watching us. The Lord bless Beatrice. Julius Denanuio, God bless you for joining us. Dorcas Chepiatich is also watching. Pastor Grace Israel Ukeri is also watching. God bless you. Mm. Julie said, So true, sir. May God give us growth in the church and help us move from carnality to spirituality. I love that Rema. The Holy Ghost may not tell you things but guides you as a child. But when you are mature in Christ, it shows you, to, you are correct, man, very correct. Hope Chibundu is watching all the way from Scotland. God bless you. She said, ha, 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 daddy, che, I come late. <laughs> God bless you. Bless everyone who joined us from different parts of the world. Let's get into number three. Number three. The third way to acquire qualitative, qualitative growth. Number three, the third way to acquire it is taking qualitative steps every step you take must be qualitative taking qualitative steps don't just take any stupid step take steps in quality take steps into quality take steps that matter don't waste time i don't like wasting time you know one young man that i asked to walk in the church here was speaking with me when he was talking with me, I weighed what was I told him what you are saying to me is very useless. He said, Why? Well, I said, Because you should do all those without telling me. Can you allow me to use my brain for important decisions? Because I, this thing that you are saying to me, what? excuse me, he said this is true. So, what are you telling me for? You are just whiling away my time, the time I will use to, to acquire some important things to my spirit. You are just, excuse me, sir. No, come and go and manifest and leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Jerry, because I don't have time for that. See, you should know things that are quality in your life. And then run after them. Don't waste time on stupid things. On things that will not add quality value to you. You know, I tell my children, watching cartoon, there's nobody on earth that got an award for watching cartoon. I have never seen any child, they give him a plaque and say, this is the greatest cartoon watcher. <laughs> I tell my children, stop watching cartoon so that you don't stop, you don't start behaving like cartoon. Because by the time you watch cartoon, you don't be doing like cartoon. I prefer them learning to play keyboard, learn to play drum set, they become more useful. Learn to read books, learn to play guitar, and so on. It makes you more useful. But watch it. Have you ever seen somebody, they bring him to come and be cartoon on, in church or bring him to anywhere to come and show cartoon? <laughs> no, I've never seen any gathering and then they bring a cartoon. For what? <laughs> Serious? <laughs> I don't have that for cartoon. So I tell them, my friend, stop watching cartoon. Come on, can, can you watch how to play keyboard? Watch how to play drum set and something important. Watch how to study and be an uncommon person and be wiser. I, because I've never seen anybody who got an award for cartoon. Hallelujah, praise God. So taking qualitative steps. The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 23. <laughs> Excuse me. Psalm 37, verse number 23. The Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered. So you must take steps that are ordered. Not just steps that takes you anywhere. For God to order your steps, you must know where he's taking you to. And I've never seen God take anybody to the forest or to a bush or to a toilet. He always, <laughs> he always takes you to somewhere very important. So allow God to order your steps. You know, somebody sang and said, Please order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Let him order your steps by his word. You know, one day, a certain man of God told me to do something. When I calculated it, I discovered God is not telling me to do it. So I asked him, excuse me, sir. What you are asking me to do now, is it God that asked you to tell me to do it? Or you just wanted me to do it from your mind? He looked up and down and said, I just thought you should do it. I said, no, I'm not going to obey you. I prefer doing exactly what God tells me to do and not what you thought I should do. Because it's better for me to do what God asked me to do, not what you told me to do. So I don't go and walk into error. And my life is damaged. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 133, Order my steps in thy word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. When you are not ordered by the word of God, iniquity will have dominion over you. Secret sin. That's what they call iniquity. Again, in Psalm 73, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Truly, God is good to Israel, even such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well, uh, had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. See, when you look at the wicked and you get envious of them, you will almost fall off. Let God order your step qualitatively. Don't let envy order your steps. Don't let foolishness order your steps. Don't let jealousy order your steps. I, I love those who value good things. When they see good things happening to you, they are rejoicing. I can show them everything. I also, I'm also happy when good things happen to them. Because they're happy when good things happen to you. When you are moved by envy and jealousy and you take steps, it's not a quality step. You will soon fail because you don't know where the guy is getting instructions from. You don't know where he's getting instructions from. You know, uh, you want to copy my lifestyle. You don't know where, what, what, who is instructing me and who, whose music tune I'm dancing to. And you follow me. You just go, oh, yeah, that's like a masquerade. <laughs> They will still catch you and take you to psychiatric hospital. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 26, verse 3 to 5. 2 Chronicles 26, 6 to 3, verse 16 years old was Uzziah, Uzziah when he began to reign. And he reigned 50 and 2 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jacoliah of Jerusalem. 
And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Mosiah did. How? The Bible says, and verse 5 says, And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding. He followed the man that had understanding in visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Why? He followed the right person, and the right person showed him the right steps to take, quality steps, and he prospered. After that man died, the Bible says in verse 16, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up in, to his destruction. When he started taking useless steps, he got himself, he destroyed himself. So quality steps gives back to quality growth. Number four, the fourth thing that helps you to grow qualitatively is going the extra mile to acquire excellence. Going the extra mile to acquire excellence. Many times people like doing shoddy job. They say we'll do it later. They, they want to put this flower somewhere. Instead of putting it at the right place, they put it somewhere. They say, I'll put it where later. That is devoid of excellence. Put it exactly where it should be now so you don't do the job twice. My father told me something when I was very small. My father said, whatever is worth doing at all is worth doing well. He told me, say, if you are going to do anything, do it well at the first instance. Don't do rehearsal when you get to the stage. You can practice before you get to the stage, but as soon as you are getting to the stage, do it well once and for all. Take an extra mile to acquire excellence. That is what they call qualitative growth. Do something good. Don't just open your mouth until something good is about to come out of your mouth. Don't just make noise. And after talking, people look around and say, who, 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 who invited this guy? <laughs> <laughs> huh? How, how, how did you get here? And you say, yes, you. <laughs> because of the way you talked. Who, who told you of this meeting? And you are not feeling embarrassed. Why? Because what came out of your mouth was very useless. I was, <laughs> I was in, a, you know, in a gathering. And a certain guy stood up and spoke. After I finished speaking, the moderator stood up and said, Sir, who asked you to open that thing, that toilet that you call mouth? <laughs> all of us are there. <laughs> because what the guy said did not make sense at all. So the mother said, who told you to open that thing, that toilet you call mouth? We, we, we laughed and we almost fell off from our chair. The man was highly embarrassed. He thought what was saying made sense. It, all of us knew it did not make, make sense. Work on yourself. Go an extra mile to add value to your life. Go an extra mile to acquire excellence. Excellence in dressing. Don't just dress and say nobody's looking at you. We have seen you. <laughs> Don't just dress and say nobody's looking at you. It's a lie. We saw you. Your trousers have holes. There are places you cannot enter. Your jacket is faded. Your shirt is torn on the neck. You don't qualify to enter some places. Don't tell us it is poverty. Are you the only poor person? Wash the one you have and wear it and let us know this one. You could look old, but this is clean. Go an extra mile. Iron the dress. Not when you are wearing trousers. By the time you turn, all the buttons area has folded as if it is a skirt. <laughs> and you know that it has been long, the thing so iron. They have not ironed it or pressed it for a very long time. So it has squeezed, it has lines like this to show us how you are sitting down. Go an extra mile to add excellence. Go an extra mile. That's what it, excellence brings out the quality and beauty in you. When that thing is in you, people don't like you. Go an extra mile. Brush your teeth well. Arrange your hair. Do things well. Don't just do things and then nobody looks at you. People have seen you. And they've already marked you that this one is just like this, that man like mad person. Daniel chapter 6. From verse 1 to 4. Going the extra mile to acquire excellence makes you grow qualitatively. Amen. Daniel 6, from verse 1 to 4 says, 
it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first. Why? That the princes might give account unto them that the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred. When you go an extra mile to acquire excellence, you'll be preferred. Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the president and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find occasion nor fault. No, no occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. This guy was excellent. He went an extra mile to pray. Extra mile to do things. He was committed to details. To this extent, he could not find any error. Not even one. That is a quality human being. Amen. Do you know that this man was vice president for many governments? Anytime a new government comes, they go and look for him and bring him. And he was not a citizen of the country. He was a slave. He came in there as a, as a slave. Anytime a new government comes to Babylon, they go and look for him. He was vice president for more than four or five governments. He lived very old before. He was very old before he died. This is Daniel. Why? Excellent. Every time a new government comes, they will recommend that guy. Is very good. Though. Forget that he was in the old regime. He's, he will serve you. Very good guy. They always put him there. Why? Quality makes you desirable. Makes you palatable. Makes you finger licking and very tasty. Everybody wants you around because you are quality. When you come, your thought pattern is sharp. Your thinking faculty operates well. You can operate anywhere. The, in fact, the enemy camp will want you. Your friends will want you. Your own people want you. Everybody wants you because of quality. Develop yourself in a qualitative way. Develop yourself. In your area of skill, in your area of expertise, be an expertise, be a quality person. You'll be well sought after. Everybody will be looking for you. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 41. Matthew 5, 41. The Bible says, And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Whoever will compel you to go a mile, go with him two miles. Go with him two miles. Why? Extra mile. Go an extra mile to acquire excellence. An extra mile. An extra mile to dress well. Extra mile to speak well. Stop saying, I, I don't know how to speak English. Learn it so you can enter some great quarters. I don't know how to do this and that one. One of my pastors one day told me he cannot sing. I said, it's a lie. You, you, better, eh, you can talk. He said, you can, as anybody who can talk and sing. So develop your singing ability. And I told him, develop it now that the church is small, before the church explodes. So that you don't embarrass yourself singing off key. And you are trying to round off song and you are not singing like a frog. And the keyboard is, is praying against you. So he began to learn how to sing. One day I saw him sing. I said, you see now? But you are telling me life before that you could not sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Develop yourself. Develop yourself. Develop yourself. Go extra mile. That extra mile is equality. Extra mile in thinking. Extra. When people talk to me, I think faster and very deeply. So with that, I have solution to their problem that they never even thought of. Extra mile in behavior. Ex be extra careful. Don't take anything for granted. When you are fond of taking things for granted, you'll be disappointed and messed up one day. In fact, you'll be disgraced. So go an extra mile. Okay? Number five. The fifth point is regularly update your mindset. Regularly update your mindset. That is what makes you quality in thoughts. Because in life, if you don't Think you will stink. You will stink like this. You will smell it. Wow. You need to update your mindset so that your thinking faculty can function well, so you don't stink when you are talking. In fact, when you don't think, you will stink. You will shrink. In fact, you will sink. You will go down. Because by the time you are talking, about wonder what what what, what is this one saying? What is it? And you know this guy never talked before. He, he can, doesn't think before he talks. His mouth is just like basket mouth. You're pouring everything. So, update your mindset. Update it. Don't be where God has left. For example, 
we are doing digital church now i had to quickly update my mindset and begin to operate there i have never used zoom before it was pastor felix that told me how to use zoom i had to quickly acclimatize and begin to zoom up and down nearly every day now i'm zooming <laughs> hallelujah update your mindset the bible says in romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 it says i beseech you therefore brethren romans chapter number 12 verse 1 to 2 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies can you project that scripture please present your bodies a living sacrifice only acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service my emphasis is verse number two it says and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will see when you prove that you are good it's okay but you must prove that you are also acceptable everywhere and then you must go beyond that and be perfect improve your mind renew your mind so that it can move from good to acceptable to perfect so that you can become an authority don't remain where god has left you brought the village mentality you are, you are still carrying it about in nairobi <laughs> the, the, the kogelo spirit you, you you brought the kakamega spirit eh? the meru embu and you are now you are, you are now in nairobi polish yourself oh Jerry. and you are wearing wrapper carrying wood <laughs> the way they used to do in the village this is nairobi better wear suit update your mind and then you're 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 you're, 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 you're using the accent or, or, or that they use in the days of jomo kenyatta <laughs> we have improved <laughs> things have gotten better so improve yourself renew your mind when you renew your mind you see yourself change your dressing change your attitude change your character you don't be like a village-minded fellow oh glory to jesus renew your mind ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 ephesians 4 23 says and be renewed in the spirit of your mind ephesians 4 23 project it and be renewed in the spirit of your mind is somebody in that studio ephesians 4 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind check that guy is he alive there be renewed in the spirit of your mind always renew the spirit of your mind so that you can be updated in quality so you don't have outdated quality hallelujah praise god there was a lap ipad i used to have before very bungu like this bungu ipad very heavy i used to like that ipad if i carried it to america i preached with it in america for the first time then they told me that the ipad is outdated so i went to an i i phone shop where they sell ipads the repeal that made the ipad i entered the apple shop so i gave it to them and told them i want to upgrade it they told me no they can't upgrade it i said why are you not the one who made it they are the ones who made it they said it has expired i said how i'm still using it they said come on okay we have left this level so i said okay take it and give me a new one even if there's money different i'll pay they said no we don't even need it i just said so what do i do to do they said trash it I said, what did you say? He said, I should drop it in the dustbin like this and walk away. I was amazed. Because it is outdated. It was quality before, not now. The quality has expired. In the days when they used to build house with mud, mud, M-U-D, mud house, they dig the ground, dig and you stand, and they mold it, and they, and, they, and they check it, and they say, this house is fantastic. And people like clap. Those days are past. When you build it, now they ask you if it's chicken that will live inside or mouse <laughs> things have changed so update your mind so that your quality can be updated when you refuse to update your mind you'll be outdated they told me to trash the ipad it is outdated the, and it was powerful ipad in the days when i first bought it i was looking like a great man <laughs> so i carried it i came home and i dashed my son my son used it used it for a few days and wanted to put cartoon inside the cartoon he was able to put there was the cartoon they were watching in the days of arab moi <laughs> 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 
he wanted to get the latest cartoon it could not update they said the operating system of the ipad is outdated he came to meet me and said i should buy him a better ipad i was ashamed and that's the ipad i was using a whole me that is how life is when you refuse to improve your brain you'll be outdated hallelujah praise god number six the sixth way to acquire qualitative growth is invest in quality decisions stop making quick 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 decisions decisions that will not add quality value to you invest in quality decisions what are the kind of decisions you are taking for example i took a decision that it is time for us to get land and i focused on it because if it is a, if it, if I, we don't get land imagine we did not have our own place and coronavirus came like it came how will i be able to pay the rent and churches are closed and i'm preaching online and i'm telling you send the offering send the offering and they say send the offering it's okay yeah, send the offering <laughs> hallelujah you, you, you. by the time i pay with all my savings after a while there will not be anything to pay but i took a quality decision at the right time and god said to me you are moving to that place in march it was difficult to move here in march but i forced everybody here in that march 8th of march we started service here 16th of march corona exploded everywhere by the end of march they closed churches everywhere imagine where will i be getting money to pay rent take quality decisions quality decisions shows us how quality your mindset is in those days, I remember it was only one light. We put a one, one halogen light that was shining. And I'll be preaching inside it. Shouting. The whole place is dark. The first time I slept in that office, the, 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 there was, the, the other side was not there. So wind was blowing me freely. <laughs> freely, the wind was coming. There was nothing holding it. It was very happily pouring on my head. Co was catching me under pressure, but I had to stay there. Learning to, because I had to take that decision. Until God began to help me. Invest in quality decision. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 24 to 26. By faith, Moses, when he was come of years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the children, people of God, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the riches that, and the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of reward. One day, that guy took a quality decision. I refuse to be a pharaoh. I am a deliverer. And that was when his destiny got switched on. Because they were preparing to be a pharaoh. There comes a day when you have to take a decision that will make you identified in this life. Amen. Look at today. That decision he took was what made him a Moses today that everybody wants to be like. You see some people carrying long stick like this and they have long beard. They want to be like Moses. If he was a pharaoh, nobody wants to be a pharaoh. You are not a pharaoh. Pharaoh called pharaoh. <laughs> I've never seen anybody who, have, who, who told me wants to be a pharaoh. But everybody wants to be like Moses. Why? Because he took a quality decision one day. He said, I'm not pharaoh's daughter. I'm not pharaoh's daughter's son. No way. I'm not going to be a pharaoh. Pharaoh called. You know, one of my ministers used to call pharaoh pharaoh. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to be a pharaoh. Pharaoh called pharaoh. Pharaoh. I am going to fulfill my own destiny. I will not be a pharaoh. And God helped him. Take decision. You must take quality decision. If you don't take quality decision, your life will not be a quality life. You are a sum total of the decisions you've taken. You are a sum total of the decisions you've taken. If you check me now, all that you can see around me were decisions I took. This altar was a decision I took to build it. Decision I took to buy that speaker. Decision I took to get here everything in your life is a sum total of the decision you took if there are shameful things in your life is the product of your decision everything happening to you is the product of the decision you took everything not happening to you is the product of the decision you never took you are a sum total of the decisions you've taken so what kind of decision do you take quality or useless decisions the bible says again in genesis 39 verse 7 to 10 and it came to pass after these things genesis 39 7 to 10 that, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon joseph and said lie with me but he refused and said unto his master's wife 
behold my master what it not what we see with me in the house and he had committed all things that he had to my hand there is none greater in this house than i neither had he kept back anything from me but thee because thou art his wife the bible said how then can i do this great wickedness and sin against god and it came to pass that he speak to joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her what, what finally happened he went to prison from prison he went to power quality decision he made up his mind i'm not fornicating say fornication no way and god delivered him Amen. quality decision quality decision imagine he changed his mind he would have become mr P P potty joseph he would have arranged his name he would not make mrs potty for pregnant they will not give her to uh, potty joe his life would have ended there in fact one day potiphar we just know they will skin him alive they will wound him permanently but god delivered him quality decision that was why he became a prime minister quality decisions gives back to qualitative growth quality decision give back to qualitative growth in life hallelujah praise god first samuel chapter 17 verse number 32 check if there are some questions first samuel 17 32 the Bible says, and david said to saul let no man's heart fail because of him thy servant will go and fight with the philistine and that was the day david came to limelight a quality decision brought david to limelight your servant will go and fight with this philistine he made up his mind and that decision changed his life one decision B put his name on the world map put his name in the book of record made people start looking for him make them compose a song because after the decision they started singing david had killed in ten thousand Saul had killed in one thousand they, they composed a song for him one decision when you take quality decision it turns your story around your life around quality decision in daniel chapter 3 verse 16 to 18 daniel 3 16 to the bible says shadrach meshach and abednego answered and said to the king O nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer thee in this matter if it be so our god whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king but if not he will let if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up one decision made these guys uncommonly rich because by the time they entered the fire and came out blessings pursued them blessings located them and overwhelmed them one decision can change your status one decision can make you land owner one decision can bring you blessings you never imagined this was one decision that brought them into the book of records they refused to bow esther chapter 4 verse 14 to 15 esther 4 14 to 15, the bible says then esther bid them return but they carry this answer go gather together all the jews that are present in shushan and fast ye for me neither eat nor drink three days neither uh, night or day i also and my maidens will fast likewise and so will i go in unto the king which is not according to the law and if i perish i perish one decision that made esther an icon one if i perish i perish i will go into the king not according to the law i will break the law today and that breaking of the law was all lifted him ah make quality decisions so people when rain is falling they are not coming to church ah no 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 it's raining we'll come another day so when you rebuke them they will not serve again they will not serve they say no no, no. Let, let's, let's do another time let's do another quality when you take decisions that are shallow <laughs> your life will be a shallow life when you take decisions to always dodging, hiding, your life will be a shallow life. When your pastor gives you an assignment, you don't want to do it. When there are things to do in church, you are hiding. You think you are smart. It's a shallow decision. The day of adversity will come. When what you have worked for, when you have done what you have done in the presence of God will fight for you. There's nothing to fight for you. Nothing. Nothing to defend you because you took a shallow decision. From hence, so begin to take quality decision. For example, we wake up by 4 a.m. to pray. Many people are in their rooms saying, Ah, it's an apostle that does the kind of prayer of Jerry. I, let him pray for us. Say there. That's why your life remains where it is. That's why you, your shoe is eating. You can't buy a <laughs> You can't make progress. Why? Because you have not taken a quality decision to get up at an ungodly hour 
and make it a godly time to stand before God's presence. When others are getting up, you are still snoring. Oh, oh, we are, we are tired. The doctor said we should sleep eight hours a day. That's how you say. <laughs> That's how you slept and your life remained in one place. That's how you slept until they are urinating into your mouth. You now get up by 7.30 or 8 o'clock and say, every devil urinating into my mouth. What are you doing there? What are you doing there? <laughs> what won't they do there? Get up and fire prayer at the right time. Take some quality decision. Say in God's presence, three hours is paying the tithe of the time of the day in God's presence. Pay that tithe of time and pray and get spiritual stamina to serve God on earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. Quality decision. Fast. When you should fast. So that your life can be fast. So your life is not slowed down by some little quick, quick, quick demons that they just manufactured the other day. You know, there are some new improved demons that are just going. <laughs> Hallelujah. Quality decisions. All right, number seven. Number seven. Avoid shortcuts. Avoid shortcuts. I was rebuking the foreman. I told him, I hate shortcuts. Do it the right way. Stop doing shortcuts. Shortcuts will cost you more than double. Shortcuts will enjoy your life and make all your efforts a wasted effort. Say, For man, I don't want shortcuts. Do it the right way because this is a building that will last for a lifetime till Jesus comes. So do it well. Why must we take shortcuts? Avoid shortcuts in life. If you avoid shortcuts, your life will be a quality life. If you always follow shortcuts, uh, you will soon discover that everything around you is crumbling and you are always starting afresh and until, until they reboot you. When, when you are dying, they will not reboot you so to, to give you another chance to live. Avoid shortcuts. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. The message version. Matthew 7, 13 to 14 says, Don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formula for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. Don't fall for that stuff, even though crowds of people do. The way to life to God is vigorous and requires total attention. Vigorous and requires total attention. Go back to verse 13. Don't look for shortcuts to God. Verse number 13. Go back there. Don't look for shortcuts to God. Don't look for shortcuts to anything. Because you, you, you will hook somewhere. Don't look for... One day, I, I wanted to go. I was moving. The site was still being built then. The church had not moved here then. I was going somewhere else to preach from site. And I decided to take a shortcut. By the time I got there, I found hold up in the shortcut. A vehicle has collapsed somewhere and they blocked the road. I was in trouble, sir. I had to now forcefully take the long cut. Short cut is longer than long cut. I'm telling you. Very long. Avoid shortcuts. Take the smooth street route, sir. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. King James Version says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in their heart. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few people like doing things the right way. And that's why we have only few people with qualitative life. Many people are living nonsense kind of life. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 20 to 27, is the story of Gehazi. Gehazi took a shortcut to get prosperity. Naaman came to be healed. After Naaman finished getting his healing, he brought that offering to the man of God. The man of God said he doesn't want. If Gehazi was smart, he would not have gone after that offering. He said he doesn't want. Gehazi said, my, my, my boss must be a fool. How can he not collect salary? In fact, I'll start collecting salary from today. And he, and he ran after the man. And the man looked at him and said, what is the problem? He said, my master said, the man knew he was lying. The man gathered some clothes. He said, they want one. The man gave him two. He said, take, take, take. He took it and he went to hide. By the time he stood before the man of God, the man of God gathered the leprosy and dashed him. The leprosy of Naaman came on him. That was why he ended it. Short cuts always leads to a leprous lifestyle. It, it baptizes one with leprosy. Don't take shortcuts. If you must live a qualitative life, avoid shortcuts. It will put you in trouble. Alright, number eight. Number eight. 
celebrate daily improvements celebrate daily improvement improve daily and celebrate it improve daily and celebrate it improve every day and celebrate it make sure there's value added to your life each day make sure proverbs chapter 8 verse 30 to 31 the bible said then i was by him as one brought up with him and i was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delight was with the sons of men daily delight be happy when your life improve every day add value to your destiny every day add knowledge to the knowledge you carry every day gather some new information every day add quality to the quality you carry every day improve yourself every day hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 the bible says but exhort one another daily hebrews 3 13 exhort one another daily while it is called today least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin when you don't daily present yourself with the word of god when you don't pray daily you will soon be hardened by sin you will become hardened that is what happened to some people when you're not telling let's go just say, i'm not going i'm not going I don't, I don't care about that anymore why they are now hardened by sin sin makes a man hardened that's why i'm praying and telling god that this corona season should expire under pressure because when some people get hardened at home when corona season is over they won't even come to church they're already hardened by the deceitfulness of sin they will tell you they're not coming they will watch it online why the online is on they, they are sleeping the other day we were, were having morning devotion somebody was sleeping the person was sleeping in tongues <laughs> sleeping and snoring in tongues <laughs> We thought the person was speaking in tongues. <laughs> Snoring in tongues, man. So people can be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Sin can deceive you until you are hardened. Acts chapter 15, 16, verse 5. Acts 16, 5 says, And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Let there be a daily increase in your life every day increase and rejoice increase in quality every day increase in quality every day let there be not be a day that a val major value is not added to your life either in knowledge or in wisdom or in understanding or in something let there be knowledge added to there be some good things entering your life every day acts chapter 2 verse 46 to 47 the bible says in acts chapter 2 46 to 47 and they continuing daily not after two or three days daily with one accord in the temple and in breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising god they were doing it daily and having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily such as should be saved because they were fellowshipping daily so God was adding daily. When you fellowship in God's presence daily, God will add value to you daily. I think I need to stop there. Amen. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, sir. That was very deep and very elaborate. And yes, I know that uh, most of our viewers, those who are watching us um, online, have been able to get something. Just for those who are joining us, maybe late, I'd just like to recap very fast on the, uh, the, uh, the, the points that uh, our Father in the Lord has, has mentioned in terms of how to uh, have qualitative growth. Um, number one was uh, consume quality food. And here we are looking at how, what exactly the word of God that you are consuming every day in your life as a Christian. What is it that you are getting into your life? What is, what is it that you are using or who are you listening to to be able to get quality food? And then number two, we looked at uh, insist on quality input. Have quality input in your life. Then we looked at number three, taking quality steps. For you to be able to have a quality, uh, 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 have quality life, you must have quality steps that you're taking as a child of God and as someone who is making a decision to have qualitative growth in life. Then we also looked at number four, going the extra mile to acquire excellence. Here we, we, we looked at someone like even Daniel, uh, the spirit of excellence was upon him and the, the way he went extra mile. Uh, Apostle has mentioned that when you're doing something the first time, you must do it right. Don't do rehearsal when you're trying to do something. Make sure you do it right so that you know there's quality in what you're presenting. 
And uh, number five, we looked at regular update your mindset. If you don't update your mindset, then you stink. Mm. You'll shrink. And, and, and there's no quality that will be seen in your life. So you must ensure that you regularly, regularly update your mindset and invest in quality decisions. One example he has told us is, is that looking at where we are today, it is the decision he made that we are sitting here today. And, you know, we are able to save a lot of, uh, you know, time, money to be able to sit here. Because yes. if we didn't do that decision today, it will be a different story. The other thing he has mentioned is avoiding shortcuts. And he talked about, you know, many times uh, we find, we try to look at shortcuts so that, you know, we can have quick things. But when you, look, uh, when you go through shortcuts, then there's lack of quality in, in your life. And then you will not be able to have quality growth. Oh. Uh, the last thing that we have looked at, number eight, is celebrate daily the improvements that, that you have. You need to daily celebrate those improvements that you are having so that you can continually be able to appreciate the level of quality you are growing day, and day in, day out. And this also will give you motivation to continually ensure that you are improving as, as days goes by. So those are the eight points that we looked at on how to have acquire quality growth. Um, maybe as I have just mentioned them, I would like to get a few questions for those who have questions. Uh, please uh, type them in the chat box so that we can be able to see them on our end and we'll be able to address each and every question as it comes. Uh, feel free to start uh, sharing your questions so that we can be able to uh, be able to give you feedback on the questions that you're raising. Okay, some people have made some comments. Sister Julie said, so true, sir. May God give us growth in church and help us move from carnality to spirituality. Say, I love that, Rema. The Holy Ghost may not tell you things, but guide you as a child. But when you mature in Christ, it shows you things. Uh, it says, again, Apostle, I love your teaching. We need to know what's important and place value on those priorities. Not waste time on what doesn't add value to our lives. I love the cartoon illustration. Very practical. So again, I love you, Rema. Don't copy others out of jealousy because you don't know what is behind their result. God should order our steps. Then we will be solid. So I love going the extra mile to acquire excellence. I love the illustration of the iPad. May we not run still and think we are current. <laughs> In Jesus' name. All right, Mary Otieno had helped us summarize everything. The eight points are there. Okay, it's consume quality food, not consumer. Consume quality food. And consume quality food. So the R, E and R, the R is not there. Consume quality food. God bless you. Sister Pastor Hope Chibundu said, wow, this is an amazing session. So detailed. I always look forward to that administration. More grace, sir. Great harvest to you. Amen. In Jesus' name I receive. Joy of Basek. He said, thank you, sir. You really impact something into my life. God bless you. That, uh, that Joy of Basek, she said, she's from where? She's from where? Italy. God bless Joy of Basek from Italy. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I want us to wind up here today. There are no questions. So tomorrow we continue. So that people can do other things today. Um, ruminate on the teaching and let it benefit your life. Make up your mind. Make them principles. Make these things your principles. Those are, my, those are part of my principles. I have many principles. You know, many times people look at me and say, you are very tough. Mm -mm, I'm not tough. I follow principles. God is no respecter of persons, but is respecter of principles. God loves principled people. When you have principles, God loves you because he can commit things into your hand. But when you are not principled, you are neither here nor there. You are just everywhere. God cannot commit important things into your hands. You are an a fool. He can't commit anything to your hand because you waste it. Therefore, make them your principles so that your life can become a solid and quality life. All right. I want us to give our offerings wherever we are. You can give your offering from any part of the world. If you are outside Africa, you can use Send Wave. SendWave is an app that you can use, and then you add the phone number, 07, uh, uh, to, uh, plus 2547, uh, that's, the number is already on the screen. Use that phone number, it will reach us straight. It will reach us on the phone here. So use it to send your offering from any part of the world. Send seeds, send tithes, we are still building the church. 
The Lord God Almighty bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. You need a bank account. It is projected on the screen. Take a photograph of it and it will be very useful for you. The Lord God Almighty bless you as you use it to send us offerings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to bless the offering and bless those who are giving. Father, we thank you for the offering. Thank you for those who are giving the offerings. I ask you, God, that you bless them mightily. Everyone giving, receive the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and add death no sorrow. Your wealth will have no sorrow added to it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare the favor of God upon your life. I decree you will prosper. God will give you quality wealth, durable riches. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everyone who had had me teach today, I decree that your decision will pay off. Your decision to have qualitative lifestyle, it will pay off in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you blessed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tomorrow will be another powerful day. I'll be going to another dimension of qualitative growth. Please join us and then spread the news that there are some serious teachings, content rich, coming your way on YouTube, Facebook, and all the platforms. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you. Invite others to join us. See you again tomorrow at the same time. God bless you. Can we share the grace in fellowship now? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. You've done a good job, man. God bless you. May God take you higher. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody, bye-bye. God bless you. See you tomorrow.